so hello students today in this lecture we are going to cover these two boilers one is the babcock wilcox boiler which is a water tube boiler okay and the other one is the locomotive boiler okay with having the main application in the railways so today in today's lecture we are going to cover these two topics and one is about the selection of boilers as per their application or as per their uh, different functions so these topics we are going to cover in today's lecture so uh, this one is the babcock wilcox boiler as we have already studied in our last lecture uh, so these are the different parts of the babcock wilcox boiler this is the main drum okay where the water is supplied from the external source and uh, these are the water tubes as it is a water tube boiler and this one is the grate here it is the fire door okay and here the steam uh, movement is there these are the baffle plates okay there is also a baffle plate this one is the down take header this is the up take header firstly the water from the drum comes to the down take header and where there is a heat all around it all around the tubes okay hot gases are there and the water enters into these tubes these tubes are actually not horizontal not vertical these are the inclined tubes okay these are inclined at some particular angle so as the water starts heating up it starts converting into the steam and it moves towards the uptake header and from the uptake header it again enters into the drum and this cycle repeats on until the whole water is converted into the steam there are also a superheated tubes are also there in this to further heat the steam present in the drum okay this is the same anti priming pipe which is also used in the cochran boiler that is to remove the moisture content from the steam or to convert that steam into the dry saturated steam okay and this is the main safety valve this is the pressure gauge water level indicator feed valve so we are going to study the different parts one by one now so let's start with the different parts and their functions so firstly the babcock and wilcox boiler is a stationary water tube boiler it consists of the steam water drum a short tube connects the steam water drum with the uptake header and downtake header as shown in the figure see here this steam water drum this one is a steam water drum and it is connected with the tubes through this uptake header and downtake header okay a mud box is equipped with each down space header and the mud collected is removed so the mud is removed from these doors so this one is a mud collector mc okay from here the mud is removed or some impurities if there are so and one thing uh, that is very important in case of these boilers that the water which is fed to these boilers must be very pure water it does not contain any impurities or any dust particles so the water that is fed to the boiler must be treated first and the pure water is fed to the boilers okay now let's start with the different parts of babcock wilcox boiler so firstly the water drum it is a horizontal axis drum okay as you seen here that the drum is in the horizontal shape okay it is a horizontal axis drum containing water and steam it is connected by a short tube with an uptake header or riser at the back end this one riser is an actually downtake header at the back end and uptake header in the front side downtake header this is present at the rear end of the boiler and joins the water tubes to the rear end of the drum okay so downtake header joins the water tubes to the rear end of the drum okay it collects the water from the drum so this one is the downtake header then uptake header it is present at the front end of the boiler and is attached to the front end of the drum okay just see here again 
that uptake header is attached to the front end of the boiler and downtake header is attached to the rear end of the boiler okay that is main its main function is to collect the water from the drum you can also write it in your own words it transmits the steam from water tubes to the drum okay so its main function is to transfer the steam that is in the water tubes to the drum then the water tubes these are the tubes in which water passes and changes into steam the water tubes 10 cm dia is there are inclined to the horizontal and connect the uptake header to the downtake header due to its inclination the water tubes are not completely filled with water and water and steam are easily separated okay so as you see in here that the water tubes are connected between the uptake header and the downtake header okay and these are the inclined tubes that means the water which is entering from the drum is not completely filled in these tubes this is assembled only here in this portion near the downtake header and after that the steam starts converting uh, the water starts converting into, into the steam and that steam is taken from here the uptake header next is the baffle plates baffle plates are present within the water tubes it causes hot gases to move upwards and downwards and again upwards before leaving the chamber okay baffle plates are provided to deflect hot flue gases actually these are provided to give the direction to the hot flue gases firstly the gases moves upwards then downwards again upwards and then exhaust through the chimney okay that means it provides the direction to the hot gases fire door is there it is applied to burn the solid fuel in the furnace then grate it is a platform in which solid fuel is burnt okay solid fuel may be coal then mud box a mud box is provided with each downtake header and the mud that is settled down is removed see here the mud box is provided with the downtake header and the mud collected here is removed through this mud collector then feed check well it is employed to fill water in the drum then furnace the furnace is placed under the uptake header in which the fuel is actually burnt dampers the dampers are operated by a chain that passes over a pulley to the front of the boiler to regulate the draught then water level indicator is there it is an important fitting which indicates the level of water inside the boiler drum to an observer that how much water is there in the drum because in case of the this uh, water tube boilers na so the presence of water is must it will not work in the if the water stops for some time that then in that condition there are the chances of the burning of tubes so the water level must be properly maintained in these type of boilers then pressure gauge is there is used to measure the pressure of the steam inside the boiler drum and when the uh, required pressure is achieved then it is taken that steam is taken from the boiler and fed to the turbine okay then safety valve is there it is a device attached to the steam chest for preventing explosions due to the excessive internal pressure of the steam sometimes if the pressure is increased above the limits then the safety valve is there the superheater a superheater is the main part of steam generating unit the superheater is used to increase the temperature of the saturated steam without raising its pressure okay so see here the superheated tubes are there in this type of boiler superheated tubes okay that is to increase the temperature of steam and convert it into the dry saturated steam okay and top valve it is the largest valve on the boiler 
So it is used to control the flow of steam from the boiler to the main steam pipe and to shut off the steam completely when required. Okay, this is actually also a safety valve type. So this one is the stop well and the different parts. Now the advantages of Babcock and Wilcox boiler. Firstly, this boiler produces a steam up to 2000 to 40,000 kg per hour. See the quantity. It is 2000 to 40,000 kg per hour. It takes less space as compared to other boilers. The boiler tubes can be easily replaced. It is the only boiler that is used to produce a huge quantity of heat in the power plants. Okay, and uh, as we have already studied the comparison between fire tube and water tube, that in case of water tube boilers, the heating area is more. The steam uh, water is quickly converts in, into the steam as compared to the fire tube boilers. Okay. And uh, in this boiler, the drought loss is low. It can be easily repaired and cleaned. Its efficiency is high. Okay, high overall efficiency. And there are some disadvantages also, disadvantages like large maintenance cost. It is not suitable for impure and sedimentary water. This we have already studied that the water which is supplied in the boiler must be pure. Okay, the water treatment is necessary before feeding in a boiler. A continuous feed water supply is needed to work. A continuous water supply is required for this type of boilers. If continuous water is not supplied, even for a small duration of time, in this case, the boiler is overheated and the water level must be strictly observed during the process of Babcock and Wilcox boiler. So these are the advantages and disadvantages for Babcock and Wilcox boiler and the study of its main parts. Now let's see the different parts that are used in these boilers, see how they look like. The first one is the fusible plug. It is there in the Cochrane boiler also. If the water level in the boiler falls below the predetermined level, the boiler shell and the tubes will be overheated. So fusible plug is required. Okay, and how it looks like. So this is the shape for the fusible plug. And uh, next is the water level indicator. This indicates the water level in the boiler. So this is the construction for the water level indicator and see here the different parts are there. Pressure gauge. So it is like this analog meter type. Okay, there is the needle. This indicates the pressure of the steam in the boiler, that how much pressure is there. Because we want the steam outlet from the boiler at some particular pressure. Okay, until that pressure is achieved, only then the steam is taken out from the boiler. So the pressure is checked from this type of meter and it is in the bars. Then steam stop valve is there. It regulates the flow of steam supply outside. The steam from the boiler first enters into the anti-priming pipe where most of the water particles associated with the steam are removed. This we know that anti-priming pipe is to remove the moisture content from the steam. And this is how it looked like actually. The safety valve, the function of safety valve is to prevent the increase of the steam pressure in the hauler above its design pressure. And this is how the safety valve looks. Actually, these are the totally mechanical components. Feed check valve, the high pressure feed water is supplied to the boiler through this valve. This valve open towards the boiler only and feeds the water to the boiler. So this is the diagram for the feed valve. And then blow off cock is there. The water supplied to the boiler always contains some impurities like mud, sand, salt due to the heating. These are deposited at the bottom of the boiler. They have to be removed using blow off cork. Okay, actually blow off cork is not present in the water tube boilers because for the water tube boilers, we want the pure water. But in case of Cochrane boiler, the blow off cork is there. 
okay and uh, that uh, mud and impurities are all settled down at in the base of the boiler and that is removed through this blow off cock and this is how it looks like then this one is the air preheater there also the baffle plates are there for the proper circulation of air inside this machine now let's start with the locomotive boiler the functioning of locomotive boiler actually this is the pic of the uh, previously used locomotive boiler in the railway engines and how see here the different tubes are there okay see here the tubes are there these long tubes and uh, this is another pick outer covering for the engine and this is the actual uh, diagram which you have to draw for the locomotive boiler and see here uh, the different parts just we have to study this type of locomotive boiler and uh, just uh, take a little look for this boiler uh, see here it is the grate and uh, where the fuel is put down maybe coal or any other type of fuel is there here it is the ash pit is there from where the ash is removed and air is supplied for the heating purpose and then here is the all the hot gases are collected and these hot gases are further allowed to move through these tubes and the water is all around these tubes okay water is all around these tubes and further see here these are the fire tubes actually from where the hot gases are flowing okay and in some of the fire tubes see here the above two three tubes okay above in the two three tubes there are is the superheated tubes also okay there is superheated tubes also to further increase the temperature okay so further uh, to increase the temperature and the water is all around these tubes okay and here it is the fire hole hole to check the status of hot gases inside this portion furnace area uh, here it is the water gauge is there this there is the lever safety valve is there whistle is there as we have already seen in the railway engines the whistle is there steam dome is there here the steam is collected and removed okay then there is the smoke box door okay here is the exhaust steam pipe we have seen uh, in the previous engines that uh, some of the steam is removed from this from here the flue gases to the atmosphere theek hai yahan se steam exhaust ki jati hai to the atmosphere and some of the steam is also exhaust from here the downward also okay yahan se bhi nikali jati hai and this hole is called as a smoke box door okay if the further if the smoke is collected it is removed from this door also here it is the regulator okay and this complete body is called as the shell okay this is called the shell this is the dampers the dampers are provided for the proper circulation of air these are the movable dampers theek hai jaise ek thoda sa door type laga hota hai ki ye movable hai open or close as per the movement of air is there so dampers are there so little baffle plate is also provided here baffle plate to just assign some particular direction to the hot gases okay so this is the figure for the locomotive boiler locomotive boiler is a horizontal fire tube boiler so it comes under the category of fire tube fire tube type mobile boiler okay it is jaise uh, cockran and babcock wilcox say these are the permanent fixed boiler at some particular location but locomotive boilers are the mobile boilers they are movable boilers okay they can move from one place to the other place the main requirement of this boiler is that it should produce steam at a very high rate therefore this boiler requires a large amount of heating surface and large grate area to burn the coal at a rapid rate in order to provide the large heating surface area a large number of fire tubes are set up and heat transfer rate is increased 
by creating the strong draught by means of steam jet artificially steam ka ek jet produce kiya jata hai for the proper draught locomotive boiler is horizontal drum axis artificial draught natural circulation मल्टी ट्यूबुलर ठीक है मल्टी ट्यूब्स है इसकी मोबाइल है फोर्स्ड सर्कुलेशन मीडियम प्रेशर सॉलिड फ्यूल फायर्ड फायर ट्यूब बॉयलर सी हेयर द डिफरेंट पार्ट टॉपिक्स है ना और हेडिंग्स यू सेट हॉरिजोंटल है आर्टिफिशियल ड्राफ्ट क्रिएट किया जाता है थ्रू फैंस फैंस के थ्रू मतलब हॉट गैसेस को सर्कुलेट करवाया जाता है नेचुरल नहीं है आर्टिफिशियल है नेचुरल सर्कुलेशन है उसके अंदर फिर ठीक है मल्टी ट्यूब्स हैं एक नहीं है बहुत सारी ट्यूब्स हैं मोबाइल है एक जगह से दूसरी जगह इट कैन इजली मूव फोर्स्ड सर्कुलेशन इज आल्सो देयर इन सम पार्ट्स देयर इज अचुरल सर्कुलेशन वेयर एज इन अदर पार्ट देर इज अ फोर्स सर्कुलेशन इज देयर देन मीडियम प्रेशर है मतलब इस केस में प्रेशर इज नॉट दैट मच हाई एज देयर इन दैपकॉक और कॉकरन सॉलिड फ्यूल फायर्ड है सॉलिड फ्यूल में कोल आ जाता है कोल फायर्ड इज देयर एंड फायर ट्यूब की कैटेगरी में आता है ओके एंड विद द इंटरनली फायर्ड फर्नेस इसकी फर्नेस भी अंदर ही है क्योंकि कई बॉयलर्स में द फर्नेस इज एक्सटर्नली फायर्ड मतलब आउटसाइड रहती है सारे अरेंजमेंट से बट हेयर इट इज द इंटरनली फायर्ड फर्नेस इट इज यूज इन द मेराइन इंजन एंड रेलवे लोकोमोटिव इंजन इट इज द मोबाइल बॉयलर मोबाइल बॉयलर है ये मूव होता है एक जगह से दूसरी एंड हैज अज स्टीम जनरेशन रेट बट नॉट एज हाई एज इन द केस ऑफ बैपकॉक एंड कॉकरन कैटेगरी नाउ लेट स्टडी द डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ लोकोमोटिव बॉयलर Firstly, the fire hole is there. It is a hole provided at the air rear end of the boiler. Rear, or the back end of the boiler. The solid fuel is entered and burned into the furnace through this hole. See here, this one is there. Okay, here it is the fire hole. Grate is there. The so at the rear end of the boiler. Piche. Fire box. Fire box is a type of box in which the burning of fuel take place. great it is a platform on which the solid fuel is kept and burnt theek hai niche se air supply karenge only then the burning take place then fire brick arc it is placed inclined over the grate it prevents dust ash and the burnt fuel particles from entering into the fire tubes so this arc provides a way for the hot exhaust gases to travel a definite path before entering the fire tubes of the boiler ye fire brick arc na isko bola gaya in this ki yahan pe jo hum fuel supply kar rahe hain that fuel or some of the impurities must not enter into the these tubes fire tubes okay so the fire brick arc is there and it also act like a baffle plate and provide some particular direction to the hot gases then boiler tubes these are the fire tubes through which the hot exhaust gases pass and exchange the heat with the surrounding water theek hai with these hot gases the surrounding water gets heated up and converted into the steam smoke box is there according to its name it is a box in which the smoke of the burnt fuel after passing through the fire tubes gets collected from here from there it is exhausted in the environment by the chimney see here again so this is the smoke box okay this is a smoke box the hot gases or the extra few gases are collected in this area and then exhausted to the atmosphere through this chimney or some of these hot gases are exhausted through this steam pipe also okay from the upper portion and from the lower portion also then blast pipe it is a pipe provided above the steam engine the exhaust steam passes through this blast pipe it is used to create artificial draft that pushes the smoke out through the chimney and creates 
सक्शन फॉर द हॉट एग्जॉस्ट गैसेस मतलब हॉट गैसेस को चिमनी के थ्रू बाहर निकालने के लिए देयर इज ब्लास्ट पाइप इट क्रिएट्स द आर्टिफिशियल ड्राफ्ट द सक्शन क्रिएटेड अलाउज द हॉट एग्जॉस्ट गैसेस टू मूव फॉरवर्ड थ्रू द फायर ट्यूब्स इट ऑल्सो अलाउज द हॉट एग्जॉस्ट गैसेस टू मूव फॉरवर्ड थ्रू द फायर ट्यूब्स then steam pipe is there it is the pipe through which the steam passes we have two steam pipes one in the main steam pipe present in between the superheater header and dome and the second one is that which connects the superheater exit end to the steam engine see here so these are the actually the steam pipes theek hai one is connected with these fire tubes and the other one here one is connected with this exhaust system also okay and the other is connected here to the steam dome okay. actually these are the superheated tubes then dome it is present at the top and contains the regulator for regulating the steam produced through the steam pipe okay then superheater element pipes these are the pipes of the superheater through which the steam travels and gets superheated okay see here again this is the dome area it is provided with the regulator and these superheated tubes then superheater header it is the head of the superheater which accepts the steam from the steam pipe chimney it is used to throw out the exhaust smoke and gases into the environment the length of the chimney is very small in this coil okay as in the case of cochran and babcock wilcox na there are you said that ki in case of the actual thermal power plants the length of chimney is too much high very uh, long chimneys are there but in case of the locomotive boilers the length of chimney is very small not just above the upper surface okay the length is very small in this case in the in this type of mobile boilers then water level indicator is there it is a device employed to show the water level in a boiler pressure gauge that determines the boiler pressure reading okay then blow off valve the purpose of the blow off valve is to remove the bird mud and other sediments it can also be applied for the drain of boiler water theek okay? hai blow off valve say if in some times there is the requirement of the cleaning or maintenance and we have to remove all the water from this type of boiler then blow off valve is there okay to remove the mud to remove the water from the boiler <clears throat> then superheater it superheats the steam to the desired temperature before entering into the cylinder of the steam engine then regulator valve it is a valve that regulates the steam through the main steam pipe for superheating then safety valve it is used to maintain the safe working steam pressure in the locomotive boiler that how much is the safe pressure must be there in the boiler it blows off the steam when the pressure of the steam increases above the safety level and prevents the blasting of the boiler okay if the pressure is increased above the limit then some of the steam is exhausted from this safety valve also Uh, so let's start with the advantages of locomotive boilers now and uh, the main advantages are it is portable isko move kar sakte ho jahan marzi so this boiler is capable of meeting sudden and fluctuating demands of steam so it can meet the fluctuating demands of steam also it is a cost effective boiler that cost is less as compared to the other boilers that are installed in the thermal power plants high steam generation rate is there it is compact in size and its operation is easy okay so these are some of the advantages for the locomotive boilers and uh, disadvantages like it faces the problem of corrosion and scale formation okay corrosion the main problem in these type of boiler the corrosion of tubes 
fire tubes that are surrounded by the water unable to work under heavy load conditions because of the overheating problems so some of its water space are difficult to clean so difficult for the cleaning purpose and the overall efficiency is less as compared to the other boilers and its applications are in the the main application is in the railways and marines okay in the trains steam trains and uh, in case of ships this type of boiler is used in the traction engines this is also related to the railways this is also used in steam rollers it can be used in portable steam engines and some other steam road vehicles okay so these are some of the applications for locomotive boilers and so this is all about the locomotive boilers and babcock wilcox boiler and now some of the performance parameters for the boilers like the evaporative capacity can be calculated in terms of kg of steam per hour that how much evaporation of steam is there then kg of steam per hour per meter square that means area is also included sometimes or kg of steam per kg of fuel fired so evaporative capacity can be calculated in terms of these parameters like kg of steam per hour ek ghante mein kitni steam produce ho rahi hai ya as compared to the surface area or as compared to the kg of the fuel fired how much fuel is fired and how much steam is generated okay and uh, there is small formula for efficiency it is the ratio of heat actually utilized in the generator to the heat supplied by the fuel that how much fuel is burnt how much heat is supplied by the fuel and how much heat is utilized in our generators okay so this is uh, for the boiler efficiency now there are some parameters for the selection of steam boiler how they are selected so the following factors may be considered for the selection of a boiler firstly working pressure and the quality of the steam required that how much pressure is required for our generator yeah by our turbines or what is the quality of the steam required whether it is a, a wet or dry steam or saturated or superheated steam these all steams we are going to study in our further lectures especially in case of the rankine cycle carnot cycle when we have to do na so then we study the different types of steams are there okay then rate of steam of generation requirement is there okay then heating surface available how much surface is available to us then floor area availability then easy in repair and inspection then initial cost of installation then facility in erection facilities available then availability of fuel and water that what type of fuel is available with us or how much quantity of water is available with us so that upon that conditions we can going to select the boiler then operating cost how much cost running cost is there then maintenance cost so these all parameters must be kept in mind before selecting the boiler for any particular application okay so these are some of the parameters and then the essentials of a good steam boiler and uh, a good boiler must possesses the following features like number 1 the boiler should be capable of producing the large quantity of steam or of required क्वालिटी क्वालिटी भी अच्छी होनी चाहिए और क्वांटिटी भी ज्यादा होनी चाहिए दिस इज द मेन फीचर ऑफ अ गुड बॉयलर स्टीम मस्ट बी जनरेटेड एट मिनिमम कॉस्ट फ्यूल जो हम सप्लाई कर रहे हैं वो कम से कम करना पड़े और द स्टीम जनरेशन मस्ट बी एट हाई रेट ओके सो मस्ट बी एट द मिनिमम कॉस्ट कॉस्ट किसकी फ्यूल की the rate of steam generation must match with the requirement that what is our requirement okay how much steam is required by our turbines so that rate of steam generation must match with the requirement boiler should be reliable in operation okay continuous kyunki thermal power plants mein there is the requirement of continuous working conditions okay so the boiler should be 
रिलायबल इट मस्ट ऑक्यूपाई लेस फ्लोर एरिया कम से कम एरिया कवर करे इट मस्ट बी कॉम्पैक्ट इट मस्ट बी स्टार्टेड क्यूकली अदरवाइज दिस इज मेन ड्रॉबैक इन केस ऑफ द थर्मल पावर प्लांट्स दैट की थर्मल पावर प्लांट्स स्पेशली द बॉयलर्स टेक टू मच टाइम समटाइम्स वन डे और टू डेज टू जस्ट हीट अप प्रॉपरली कंप्लीट कंडीशन ओके दैट कंप्लीट हीटिंग ऑफ द बॉयलर takes too much time in case of the thermal power plants so the boiler a good boiler must be started quickly from its cold condition to its hot condition so that is the meaning of started quickly then the transportation of boiler can be easily done without much difficulty if required if required then construction should be simple and well designed that the repair and inspection can be done easily okay so these are the some of the parameters of a good boiler okay so this is all for today's lecture and uh, what we have covered in today's lecture that is one is the uh, babcock wilcox boiler which is a water tube boiler then we have covered the locomotive boiler its detail functioning function of different parts advantages disadvantages applications okay and then the uh, different selection parameters for the boilers and then the essentials of a good steam boiler okay so with this and with today's lecture we have covered the all topics related to our boilers okay thank you